Alright, we got the recording started. Okay. And I think I, Friday's recording went up, right? I think so. Uh, yeah, it's on okay. the channel. Great. Um, let's see, let's just run through. I think I had something that I put on the agenda. Nope. Alright, I just got it ready. Sweet. All right, um, so let's just go through and level set here. Um, so I went through and haven't finished making all those issues that we talked about yet um, last week. Um, but um, I wish I could rearrange that. Um, so for the three point or the 0.3.8 release, I updated the milestone to have all the things that we are trying to, um, you know, get working before this is, um, before we release this. Um, so, where did that go? I'll just group these guys together. Um, these guys are grouped together. I'll put this guy at the top. And this guy, go down here with the rest of these guys. Oops, oh no, oh no. Drag it all the way off the screen. All right, so these are all together here. So, yeah, so we've got the editing data flow MNIST stuff. We've got the integration um, usage example, which is the automated classification stuff. Um, we've got entry point style loadings and let's see, and I think, um, uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then support for webhook, output definition of single result. Got that one uh, PRs up as well. Uh, white fix, white space fix. And then the get pod stuff for Volpo Rabbit. All right. Um, and then I need to create a few more issues here. We got the def feature to feature. Nice job, Naeem. Um, and s let's see, what else did we finish on there? Did we. Uh, is that under the closed for this? Let me just make sure. Yes, okay, that's under the close for this. Just want to see where we are with relation to the stuff that we talked about yesterday. So auto creating definitions for subspec. Um or I think we just have auto creating return right now left. Yes. Okay. And then uh removal okay, yeah, we need to remove we need to make those uh we need to make these changes here, so we need issues for those. Um, we need an issue for modifying HTTP channel config, secret webhook, entry point. Once we get that, oh, expose. So I need to go through and make some issues here. Um, and then we'll track those too. Okay, um, and we decided Jitsi Meet is not the best. So does my voice sound a little better on this, or it might be my mic? So. Yeah, that's much better, John. It's fine. Okay, great. Cool. Let me know if it gets weird, because I'll try to get another mic if that's the case. Um, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. So, uh, let's talk about the pull requests that are up right now. Um, so, okay. Sweet. Okay, so you got the black thing sorted out. Um, if you run uh, it, John, I wasn't too sure what uh, you talked about battery activity. So can you just clarify that? Uh, what what do you what do you mean in relation to what? Uh, you asked me to make relative to everywhere, right? Sorry, you cut out right there so, again. Uh, Okay, uh, am I now? Oh, relative equals true? Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, there's just this... Yeah, relative equals true. So, 
Um, the deal is basically if you look at the code in load entry point. Um, uh, no, I saw that it adds it to the path. Yeah. So uh, when we give uh, the option in the command line, uh, are we enforcing them that uh, that path needs to be accessible? So we won't be giving the absolute path, right? Well, both of our data flow you, file and the sorry, continue, continue. So you can't, you can't, um, you can't. The the path is relative from wherever you're running, um, running Python, r running the command from the command line, right? So if you're, it's it, okay. you can't make it. If you want to make it relative to the data flow file, you have to run it relative to the data flow file. Otherwise, you have to install it right as an entry point and register as an entry point, or you have to put it in the path in the Python path, right? Because um, it's not going to. This won't. You know, this is sort of a convenience. Can you see the test case and see if, like, uh, if both of us are on the same page? Yeah, that sounds good. Let me just pull it down here so I can get. Okay, so, um, okay, uh, yeah, this is not what I meant. Um, yeah. Kind of hard yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm glad. Good. 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 Thank you for bringing this up. All right. So what I meant is just create a temporary directory, right? And then, then so create a tempter in file path and write op to ops up py. Yeah. So that's what this does, right? So, so create tempter and write op to ops up py, right? So. So that's what we're doing here, right? So we create a temporary directory, and we write to ops.py. Um, OK, yes, yeah, so we can just do. Uh, we can just do that. Um, so operation qual name is going to be, so it's just going to be ops echo string. Um, so, and let's maybe, this, this might make this, this more, uh, more so straightforward. So we'll be running the command line from that time directly. Yeah, so let's just do, uh, let's just do this to make it a little more for straightforward. So let's change directory into the tempter. So, okay, okay, you know. Yeah, so yeah, this is exactly, yeah. So now it'll make a little more sense, probably. So now we write out op to op.py, and then we uh, make the name the path relative to our current working directory, um, and then this is the data flow file path, so. Okay, so in this, actually, we can simplify all of this to. Um, so, was there a reason? Did you try this or did this not work? Did that work? Oh, I haven't tried. Okay, yeah, so let's do that. Um, um, okay, um, and then, yeah, we need, we probably need a quicker way to load these data flows from the config files here, because this is just, uh, like, you know how we have config loaders, 
right? We probably just need something that's like config loaders dot load file, and so that way we would just be right because this is like a we probably that's that's a separate issue basically. So let's just make a let's just make a note of that. So um, I'll put it under here or other things we need to do. Uh, reviewed. Simpler single shot call to load files. Config loader. Download file. Okay, so um, to load the data flow from there. Um, okay. Um, Okay, config JSON needs a comma there. Um, let's see. And actually, you don't need to specify config JSON. It'll do it by default. Um, and actually, if we're going to do that, we might as well, if we're going to just do that, we might as well actually um, keep this whole thing here. So with IO string IO as as data flow, so we can redirect standard out to data flow, and then we can just say, since it's JSON, we can just say data flow JSON dot loads data flow. Nice. Um, get value. Um, okay. Okay. Um, and then let's see. Assert in. So make sure the operation is in the data flow. Okay, input string definition. Okay. And then let's just for future, since we've got that run function now, um, let's just use the run function because um, it just sort of cleans up the test a little bit. Um, actually. Okay. Um, and then inputs. Uh, we don't need a context on that. Um, so... Inputs, input strings, results, input string. Okay, but don't you want to check for output string? Right? I think you want to check for output string. Because you're trying to see whether it made it through the operation. Is that correct? Or... Because I think what you're trying to do is you're trying to run the operation. Right. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah, and you want to check that it's an output string. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, use git single to grab the output from the operation. This makes sure. And then run the data flow. Right, and then I don't have a good way to do. I haven't. I haven't come up with a great way to do this yet. But um, sometimes 
Actually, I guess we can be pretty much sure that it's gonna it's gonna return. But sometimes I get suspicious that like, what if the loop doesn't return? But another test will catch that. So let's see. Python set up to y test dash s test slash dot df dot test df create. Let's see what happens here. Oh. Um. Let's see. This is all sorts of unorganized. All right, let me organize this. see what was going on here. Let's just do... It's Good news is it works. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. Great. So let's just run it one more time. Okay. Great. Uh, ops echo string. Sweet. Okay. So then. Now we have to add the input style. Yeah, so so let's check this out one more time. Okay, so in create we've got load um what the hell is it with the Like that was not black formatted. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So we've got data flow. We load relative there, and then we load relative in. Um, you are, I think uh, you asked me to change it. In yeah, in operation, system. yeah. Okay, so you'll change it in operation too. Okay, so I'm just, I was just thinking like, hmm, it worked. Um, so, something, something was... I changed it in operation implementation. Okay, great. So yeah, you changed it in operation implementation, but we still need to change it in operation, right? Okay. Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, okay, so let's see. Um, let me just push this up. Um, oh, wait, I think I have. Um, right, so let's see. Um, get fetch. Let's just make some notes here. So, reviewed. Um, what is this support for entry point? Okay, so uh, still need to modify operation dot load. 
And then, let's see, um, we just sort of, what did we even do here? We just kind of like cleaned up some stuff. Okay. Did some cleanup. All right. Um, Trying to figure out how to apply those things that we just did again. So this will probably work. Okay, here we go. Uh, changes from weekly sync meeting. There we go. Yes. All right, success. Okay, so Sudan should have sent the request. Oh, let's see. All right, thank you. All right. Hey, Sudan should sorry about that. All right, okay, so that's good. Are we good on that one now? Do we need to talk about anything else um, of your stuff, oh, no. Agen? No. Okay, okay. cool. I'll add this uh, in person. Oh, great. I named it F, but that doesn't matter. We'll squash it. Okay, great. Um, okay, so let's see. Well, let's go to Sudhanshu next because uh, you're here. So, um, and you've got a PR. So, I haven't looked at this yet, basically, is all I have to say. Um, get origin oh, return. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. I know someone was working on the auto def creation, so I don't remember. Who, so, uh, like, is that done? Should I change the FFM pipeline according to that, or is it still going on? I'm not sure about that. Oh, uh, the basically after you get this, change FFM peg so that it uses this. Uh, this one and. Uh, Someone was working on the order of creation, right? Sorry, I don't remember. I don't think anybody is working on this one yet. Um, okay. So if you can get to that, that's great. Um, let's see. Um, also, but the main, I think the the discussion there was mainly that like, it's like you, it it doesn't take quite the depth of knowledge that you have in the. Serve the HTTP service right now to do this. So if somebody wanted to go do that, they probably could do it quicker. Um, Sorry, I it, think we are talking about different things. I was okay. talking about the auto def creation, like once you auto def creation. creation. Oh yeah, Sudhanshu is yeah. doing that right now. Yeah, so that's actually what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, had you started on this too, or? Uh, no, no, no. Like okay. if that's done, I wanted to update the FFmpeg. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so go for the FFmpeg because he's. The, yeah, so he's got this, and and uh, so yeah, we're actually we're we did the spec and the sub spec, and so now he's working on the return type here, um, and basically the issue was that um, okay, actually I didn't read your comment here. So when we do get origin return type, it matches matches list or dict, but we 
duplicate origin. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So the actually problem is here is that uh, the uh, when we do like list uh, or dict of those uh, data classes, uh -huh. then it gives a generic uh, type class is given. Okay. Is returned. So that's like the problem. All right. Okay. And also for like the uh, like if any type is passed, so for that I haven't decided like what should I do with it. Yeah. If any is passed. Um... I would just say you have to raise. Um, so, or well, if it's, yeah, you have to raise. Let's see. Let me just make sure that, because let me, let me go through here and, and let's open up all these discussions that we had. All right. So let's just actually take it from the top here. So if it's a primitive, we just make a new definition for it. Um, great. Now, if it's a list or a dict, then we can go through and we say, all right, it's either a primitive or of array or map. Um, now we've got this case which we need to sort out and we'll sort that out later. So and then basically if it's something that can be used as a spec as the inner one, then we create a definition and it's subspec true, primitive yes, yes. correct primitive. All right, great. And then this one basically in this case is the it's just a spec. So we just create a definition with a spec and we call it map. Um, and yes. so then we need the case. Um, let's see, um, uh, let's see, we probably need a few more cases here, but the, let's just, we'll just do this for now, right? Because basically what we're doing here is, um, actually, and let's remove this else statement here. So let's remove this else statement so that if any of these if conditions happen to fall through at any point, it always will raise. Um, instead of returning null. Um, so, because then in that case, someone should basically define for us, right? So, one, two, three, four. Um, and then, so the question really is right now, like, what do we do? Um, let's see. Uh, create definition. And... Uh, da, da, da. Oh, Brett's result, that looks good, that looks good. Um, let me do this, this guy. Okay. So, the question is, what do we do in this case right now? Um, so, so, in the inner kind of, classes something else right so okay well let's think about this for a second so if somebody puts their return type as list my data class or dict my data class um, then we're just going then we'll hit this and if they put it as list any or dict any then we probably want to raise we probably want to raise because we don't know what any is right um or well i guess if it's any then it's generic um um so let's see um we have a like there is the i think there's something that's generic um but i'm not we might just want to just have this one blow up for now um, because, I mean, that's basically the safe case, right? So if somebody, if, if we get something that we don't understand, we just explode and somebody can define it themselves. Um, but if the inner class, we should probably do a check for if the inner class is a primitive type. Oh, I guess that's what I had suggested, and that's why that didn't make any sense. That's so my suggestion is that that is what I suggested, right? That where that didn't really make that much sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay. Now I'm seeing why 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 we ended up in this situation. Okay. Great. So let's just take this and say, um, you know, let's basically just do this check on. Let's see. 
So we've got inner class and okay, so it'd be yeah, let's I mean basically what we should do is do this block here, but then set the we don't set a spec. So it's just the same thing here, only we say if, I think it's here, so I think it is. I think we want to do, if inner class So why are we doing type inner class? Uh, so actually, uh, type inner class will actually give us the uh, typing dot generic class, and then we are matching it with the type of the any uh, type of the any. Okay. So, yeah. but if inner class, so if inner class will also evaluate to being a, a dict or a data class. Then if inner class, like if we do param annotation one and we've got like dict, okay, dict stir, um, stir, right, then, yeah, yeah. then inner class should be stir, right? So inner class will be in primitive types, right? Yes. Okay. So in that case, I think we can safely do something like this, where if inner class in primitive types then we say uh, we just don't assign a spec, um, and we say primitive is the primitive, and because we understand the inner class. So I think there was something uh, at some point. Like I thought about doing the the types so that you could say um, like this is a list of blank, but the problem is like. I don't know. The, the 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 issue here becomes like how how deep are we going to go with this typing information? And I think like at this point at this point it doesn't really matter because we're all in Python. The this the the issues will start coming in here, like did we include enough typing information when we get into like you know, throwing the data that operations are inputting and outputting into different languages that, that do have robust typing systems. Um, so Let's just call this good for now, um, and uh, and when it explodes later, <laughs> this will be much later, and we can just deal with it then. So let's just do this for now, um, and then that way, if somebody puts any, it'll fall through to this raise condition, and they'll be forced to define the definition themselves. But this will cover most cases, um, which is what we're going for here, because the ideal, the ideal is that you just throw at op on top of a function, and it works. Um, so, and it, it creates the right inputs and outputs for you. So, all right, okay, this, I think this is looking good. Do you have any more sort of questions, comments, concerns on this one? Yeah, so uh, there is also one more thing, like there is optional thing in the return type. So actually, I've added the, uh, uh, like in the comment uh, or in the PR, I have added that part where I have seen the optional thing. OK, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Thank you. So below, uh, so actually, it was uh, resolved like, yeah, this is the part. Oh, operation DB. OK, let's see. Oh, yeah, so the return, oh, yes, 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 sorry, the return types can be optional, that's right. Yeah, so, um, okay. Yeah, good, okay, good call, see. Um, and what line is this on? 46, so it's probably right there. Okay. So, and I believe this happens other places too. Um, 
I don't know, I guess it's just there. But. Alright, okay. Uh, so for now, what I have done is like if we uh, don't see like any outputs in the definition, then uh, we will create a defi uh, output uh, definition itself. But like uh, if there is no output definition in the uh, op, in the function which is defined for the uh, op class, then we will have to create that definition. And if that's optional, then that will be creating a problem. Okay. Yes, that's it. Okay, I see what you're saying. So that's so. Okay. Mm. Okay. So optional is also uh, an alias for union of none, and then the thing, as far as I remember. Um, so we'll basically have two cases here because this is going to be something i mean so this it's gonna it's gonna is it gonna raise or is it gonna hit this yeah it's gonna hit this okay um let's just make sure that it raises um because this is for people writing stuff this right um so they will they will immediately know whether they they screwed up um so um let's see let's see so, well, okay, the, the ideal here is, uh, damn it, I switched over without keeping the tab. Um, let's see. So, 255, five, two, 215, two, 215. So here, okay. Um, well, so the fix for this, then I guess an easy fix would be all right. No control Z, I guess. Okay, so an easy fix would be to put inspect dot is class. Um, So this would this would make it at least not error, um, right? We would at least be purposefully throwing an exception. Um, so, but the deeper issue here is that oh, let's add it here. Just make sure it's everywhere. If this is going to be a problem, we'll probably run into this more places. So let's just make sure we're doing that check. Um, okay, I think that's everywhere. Okay, great. Um, so the deeper issue here is that we need to be looking at so prim elif. So if it's in primitive types. If it's not one of these, um, I think we just need a um, a switch on it to say if it says optional at the very beginning to just recurse in, um, because so you know how we're doing right. So right here when we do git origin. Um, and git or, or yeah, so if we do git origin list or git origin dict, so if we do git origin and it comes up with typing dot optional, then we need to basically just recurse into this function with whatever the, um, you know, the zero with git args was. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. So, yes. So let's have now this isn't going to save us from union um but union would only be an issue on the return type um so if somebody puts if they if it's if this is specifically for a return type issue um right so if somebody puts union none blank on a return type or well actually i guess if they put it on a if they put it on a um, on a 
regular one too, but they're more likely to put union none and then the data type on a on a return type. Um, so if they do that, then that will throw an issue because we won't know how to handle union. Um, but let's see, could we just mm, yeah? So I would say I would say let's have um, the first if block here or I guess the first let's just have let's add an elif block to check if git origin is optional If it is, recurse, return, the, or return, create definition name, and then uh, get args. All right, okay. I think, does that settle everything on this one for now? I think we're at a space where it'll end up raising op could not determine primitive if we don't Yes, I think uh, it will be fine for now. Okay, great. Great. Yes. Um, so and then let me just put a little, let's just put comments on here just because uh, now we're here and we might as well clean things up. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Let me just make some notes on this. Good stuff. That one's going to be great. Uh, so let's see. And I need to be putting names on this. Okay. So, um, and then we talked about um, uh, uh, why am I opening WebEx? Um, we talked about auto return types on. Um, uh, yeah. Wait. Did I spell your name correctly? No, I missed an H. That's what I thought. Yes, yes. I was like yes. saying it in my head. It's Hanshu. What is that letter? <laughs> uh, more coffee. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Okay. Great. Um, sweet. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. This is this is gonna be awesome. I mean, this is gonna clean up. The next step after this is, I mean, we should probably do this before release too. Is go through and clean up everything where wherever we have inputs and outputs and try to just use at op, um, because that's gonna make the examples a lot cleaner. Um, and, and so this will be really great, especially. And then the other thing is that once, so once Ogden finishes this entry point loading, um, we're going to, so we'll, we'll need to, we'll do this, we'll clean up the examples, right? So that they use this. Ogden will do the entry point loading. And then the other thing about that is, if he does that, um, we could just write any function in a file, right? And if you pass it to, to create, and it says it hasn't been wrapped with op, it will just try to wrap it with op. So you can just have existing functions and files and then make data flows out of them. Um, we'll, we combine you know, using the two of those PRs and that'll be really, really sweet because um, people can just take their existing code and run it in data flows now. So that'll be nice. Um, so, um, let's see. All right, so who's up, who's on deck next? Um, Sakshom, I hear you talking. You wanna? Yeah. Uh, about the things you reviewed on my pull request, can you open my pull request? Uh, yes. Here we go. Can you uh, uh, can you go to that uh, subset sources comment? 
Okay. Uh, can you go right. to the sub? Uh, oh, here. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, the thing is, uh, when I did subset sources to get the uh, get, so what the subset sources do for me in my machine is that it creates a list of one uh, of source and key dict. Is that what it's supposed to do? I'm not clear about that. Okay, so let's just pop open. Um, okay. Um, Also, this code that you gave me as a starting point for uh, writing the base edit command, mm -hmm. uh, it it's uh, I don't think it will work because we uh, we are writing it in the init command, and there are async uh, syntax in it. So I ah thank uh, you yes there is. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, I missed that. Um. So I was trying to find a workaround for it, but no. So let's I see. Had... That's that's a good call. Um, let's see. Oh, I really need to go finish that unify config stuff. Uh, this will make everything so much easier. Um, let's see. Yeah, if I can go figure out how to unblock you on that, then we'll really, we'll really. The only block is there is that. The uh, they can't. Uh, I was not able to rewrite them, the uh, the data classes in a. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the block. Damn it! Oh, that was dumb. Uh, um, let's see. I'll t maybe I'll take a stab at that. Um, let's see. I just have so many things. I had to spend pretty much all weekend. Um. I pretty much spent all weekend trying to, I was taking some of the should I stuff that Yash had done, and then I, um, okay, we don't have what I was hoping we had. Um, call self async IO run, do run. Let's see. Uh, I made it so we could run the CI locally and blah, 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 and I fixed some weird issues. Um... Okay, async with self. There we go. Uh, ha! I knew we could do that. All right, great. Check this out. Um, I had added this at some point for some reason because I knew it would be useful. So, and here we go. Perfect. So let's check out base edit command. Or you haven't pushed these, right? So basically, I mean, what you can do here is you can you can you can use um, you can use a enter and a exit, right? So Basically, you can run this code that needs requires async setup stuff within the a enter uh, method. Um, so let's just modify this real quick and then give you the more complete example. Um, so da, 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 da. Um, actually, this may just be like that. Um, and then I think this will work. Yeah, that should be the only change here. So, and I would say await super dot a enter. Um, but other than that, I think that'll be all you need to do here. Yeah, that should be it. Because now. Uh oh, did I spell async wrong? Oh no, it's just mad at me because of the dot dot dots. All right, yeah, this should do it. Okay, I'll give it a try. Okay, cool, sweet. Um, and then subset sources, you said was what was the question on subset sources? Uh, it was. Uh, is it supposed to return a list with the first element of the list being the source and the second element being a list of keys? Is it supposed to return a list like? What do you mean? It's so, returning a list for me. So I.
there was uh, there were subset sources used in dataflow dot uh, pi for uh, cli slash dataflow dot pi so i ran it there it was returning it was not returning a list oh, no. okay so well i mean Oh, 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 okay. Well, so the thing is, sources is a list. Um, so sources is a list type, like the type itself is a list. Yes. yes. Um, and so, yeah, you're going to end up with a list of sources. You're going to end up with the same list of sources. Um, but the thing is, when you call um, records, what is it? Yeah, when you call records or records with features, it's going to only give you the ones that you... Um, well, and this is not a very good way to do this, goddammit. Why is this being done this way? This is going through every single... Oh, why is this happening? Um, oh, maybe it's because... Why is this the way this is done? This is stupid. Um... Yeah, so it's going to go through every single record and just like not return it unless it matches that key. So we should probably change that um, to make it so that it just goes through and, and grabs every record. that. So we should probably do this, basically. So um, during iteration, yeah. So that's, that's silly. Um, where is the records? Um, why was it doing that record? Okay. Yeah. So the thing is, what we what it really should be doing here is, um, oops, did I mute myself or something? Nope. Okay. Um, Right now, it goes through and it basically, so the way that validation sources works is it goes through every single record, and if it, the validation doesn't pass, it doesn't yield the record. Well, we really just want to only yield the records that were in the keys, the set of keys, right? So um, we should really just not do that. Um, so... And records takes a validation callable so so for for key in self dot keys um, I mean but this doesn't really I mean this isn't really related to your question so what was your question though I guess I don't understand your question you should just get back another you should just get back a sources object that you, Basically, like this sources object is the same thing as it's it's almost the same as yeah, the previous sources you that's had. That's the thing. I also thought that I'll get back the uh, sources object, but with only those records that are specified in self dot keys, right? Well, when you call records or any of like with features or anything, you're only going to get the records that were in self dot keys. Yes, you should. Yes. Yeah, that it should work like that, but it's giving me a list with the first element being the sources object, and this and the second element being the li a, a list of keys. Like if I give two three, it'll return the second element being a list two comma three. Okay, let's see. Okay, okay, I think uh, it's because it's going through data flow source and not CSV source. Okay, sorry. So can you share, or do you have an example of like what's going on? Like what, can is there a command I can run to see what's going on or? Oh, I can share my screen. Okay, great, thanks. So here I am printing the cell dot sources after calling subset sources, right? Okay, yeah. It's giving me a list. 
of uh, the object and the keys two comma three. Okay, can you go back to the code real quick? So print self dot sources. Oh, because you didn't set keys equals self dot keys. Because it's a keyword argument. Okay. Yeah. So you you basically passed keys as if it was another source. Okay. Okay. Um. So because yeah, so that's uh. Okay, okay it's working now. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Sweet. That's awesome. Um. Okay. And then let's just make an issue real quick. So gh issue create. So. So source sources um, sources record. I think I I think I wrote keys is equal to cell dot keys once before, but then I just discarded all the changes because I thought I was doing it wrong. So then oh. I rewrote everything. No worries. So no I worries. guess I would have this time. That happens. That happens. Yeah. The the things that take the longest are always like. They're, the smallest yeah, bugs. they're always the smallest bugs. Yeah. Oh no, we didn't lost Naeem. I hope we didn't have something. I know. Oh, he's got a meeting right after this. Yeah, we should make sure to get to him first. I forget about that. Um, let's see. So subset sources. Um, um, yeah, I the most of, most of the time I have the worst bugs is well, okay. So there's two things, basically, concurrency or multi-threading issues, um, and then spelling mistakes. <laughs> No, you combine the two and you'll never figure out what the hell's going on. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, subset sources. Um, uh, uh, what was can it? you so, share your screen back? Yeah, oh, sorry. So I just want to write this down. I think we're done unless... Oh, Hamanshu, did you have something you wanted to talk about? can't quite hear you hello yes now we can hear you yeah so i wanted something to work on yeah i've been busy with the college work all right great um well that's great news for us um so let's see yeah. so subset sources records um let me just write this down real quick should um uh uh okay should iterate over self dot keys rather than validating each record in parent sources. Um, uh, current implementation results in every record in sources being iterated over uh, we should make it so that only uh, we do for key in self dot keys also uh, uh, you suggested another uh, you suggested a different way for updating the records right of by not uh, making a list and directly doing await sc, uh, sc, dot update uh, okay let's... in the comment you can see yeah the yeah comment. okay okay let's see um yeah this just okay. above that just uh, yes yeah okay so this is what i'm talking about here is basically um, it's running but the problem is uh, it's sh uh, throwing a warning. Uh, it it's was running, like, but it's uh, throwing a warning. It's throwing a warning. Uh, I forgot where it was. Uh, yes, uh, and it, uh, coroutine sources context dot uh, update was never awaited. Aha! So my guess is the FML source df aha uh -huh. there's our culprit
All right, so that's that's the issue there. Um, so I'll get let's see Diff, or source df uh, fix lack of await on update. Uh oh. Uh, well, wait. I want this on master, <laughs> and I might hate myself for this because it might just blow up. But Let's, actually, let's run the test before we commit to master. Come on now. Uh, log dash n one. Okay. Let's just make sure this works, and then we'll just call it good. Um, okay. Great. Alright, okay, so that fixes that bug, and... Alright, and then I'll just push it to your branch, too, so you have it. Um, so yeah, that should, that should, because, you know, the, that's just the way, the way that the, right, the way that you're wrapping, um, the way that you're wrapping, so you, you just wrap whatever yeah. the, the sources, right? So if you call update, it's the... yeah, and update ends up in DFML source sources. Uh, okay, uh, I, I got it. Yeah, then it goes through and Thank it just you. updates everyone. So yeah, so this this should be pretty clean. Um, uh, all right, and now let me make some notes real quick because I keep getting bad at making notes. So. Auto return types talked about issues with um, optional and any. Um, so uh, next after this, okay, issues we need to make single shot call to config loader config file um, after uh, auto return types for op need to. Um, go through and remove uh, inputs and outputs from as many uh, operations as we can uh, should uh, especially ones in examples so Basically, let's just go through and remove. So, so remove inputs and outputs from at up calls in examples. Uh, I feel like we thought of another issue. Um, did I say it out loud? Did I say another thing that we need to do? Um, oh, we're going to need to. So, after. Uh, auto return types and entry point loading if function that was entry point loaded does not have or has not not been decorated with op uh, function that was entry point loaded has not been decorated with op decorated. Um, okay. Great. Um, okay. Um, and then we talked about talked about um, okay, so we talked about auto return types, we talked about this, and then did we go, we went right into Saksham stuff, so we talked about um, uh, CLI edit records command um, found out that oh oh well, we made an issue for that that subset sources usage needed key equals self dot keys um, found issue where df um, df source needed to await self.sctx dot update um, 
and fixed. Okay, and then uh, found that um, uh, we found that a subset sources could be more performant. Okay. Um, and now we're going to find something for him on you to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. This is, this is a, this one falls squarely in your lap. Um, let's make sure that Volpal Rabbit has example use, usage. Um, unless this issue is old, and it does. Um, let's see. Models. Yeah, it doesn't have. Okay, uh, great. I'll put that. Yeah, so let's put that on your to-do list here. So, um, section. Let me. T I'm trying to put names by people. Okay. Um, so. We're going to give you a few things to do here. So let's see. Um, da, da, da. So just actually to give an update on um, on this guy, the uh, the blog post thing. Um, basically, I'm trying to make it so that we can run operations like in parallel rather than just concurrently. So actually starting multiple threads and spinning things off. Um, but I was working on that a few weeks ago and I haven't had time to work on it more. Um, it ends up being kind of annoyingly tricky. Um, so that will get done soon. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask you about this. Oh, actually I have some, I have a cool demo I could show for you guys. Um, I was working with somebody on this, and let's see, documents, Python, diff, well, let me just show you guys this real quick. Um, so, uh, we've got this, we've got basically some, let's see, so we've got some, let me just cat these guys, so. So we've got some testing data and some training. Oh, okay. There's no new lines at the end of those. So cat train. So this is, oops. Oh, there's Hashim. All right. Um, so we've got some training sample data and we've got some test sample data. Um, and basically what we're looking at here is like some sales of a specific product um, from some store. And uh, what we did was we went through and we said, okay, well, this is a, this is, we're trying to predict the actual sales given the, the, the unique key is the quarter. Um, and then we're looking at the, the, um, the year, well, Wait a minute. All right, okay, I guess that's what happened here. But so where the unique key is the quarter and then we're looking at the year and the quarter of the year. So like Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Um, and then we're looking at the product number and we're trying to predict, um, we're trying to predict uh, what the what the actual sales are going to be and so basically what happened here is is this is sort of just a demo of I, I the reason why i brought this up was because um hide 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 um was because i saw this issue here on the, the fast ai thing um and i think all also related is the scikit um scikit auto scikit learn um, but basically, you know, those are the ones that try to find the best model for you. And this is a really small data set, but it's it's a uh, it's little little dumb enough data set that this works. You can basically just go through it. Kind of this is kind of the same concept as that auto scikit learn. But you can basically say, okay, what are all the scikit models that are linear regression? Right. We take those from the um, we take those from 
this list here because we know this is a this is a problem where we need to like predict a value. Um, so we grab all the regression models and we say, okay, we basically go through and we load each. So this is the list of models to try, right? So we call model.load and we get the class, psychic class, and we say, okay, the model equals the instantiation of that class where these are the features and this is the thing I want to predict. Now here's the uh, now, now here's our data sources, right? We train the model and we assess the accuracy. And I just ran the accuracy assessment like a hundred times just for shits and giggles to make sure that it wasn't getting any weird numbers if there were any randomly initialized values in there. And then I averaged the accuracies. Um, and then we just go through and we... Uh, print out predictions for each model. Um, and so you'll see um, uh, Python model. So you'll see the model name and the accuracy that it's getting um, well reported by the way that we, we do the scikit reporting. So some of them are, you know, their, their ways of, of that. What is it that I can't remember how that gets done, but there's that's there's that function within the scikit base that, um, and they're all different based on what the model is because it calls that underlying scikit function. So, but um, and then you basically go we we go through and we predict and we make the prediction on each one that's in the test data set. Um, so this kind of shows you real quickly like how you could use this is, this is sort of a good little demo I think on how you can basically just use DFFML to crank through um, different uh, different um, different models to see which one's the most accurate. So I think we could actually just add like, um, we should just be able to add like TFDNNR in here and it's gonna get horrible accuracy, but let's see what happens. Um, so. And let's see, yep, great. Thank you TensorFlow for your fucking logging. Oh God, we did accuracy a hundred times. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. Um. Hey, John. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so while you're at the topic, have you used this thing called ML flow? Yeah, I've seen that, but I haven't used that. Yeah. Yeah. So it has like it has like the only additional thing which I felt which was good was like it has a good logging feature. So it helps you to log all the accuracies and loss, and it gives you all together in a nice history. HTTP server. Nice. So, like uh, for users like this, it's kind of very helpful. So, okay. Like, for our assignments, we had to run through a lot of models. So like, it it's kind of an alternative for TensorFlow. But since we are already supporting like all models from, like, and we already have some logging stuff, it will be really cool if we also have something similar. Because it's very useful, especially for stuff like this. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of the. I, I mean, I think if you're so I've seen ML flow and there's the thing is that, that like I mean and you guys have probably seen it too but there's a lot of other things out there like DFFML now like two years ago there were not a lot of things out there that were similar and now there's like everybody and their mother has one of these things um, that's like machine learning plus flow workflow data flow ML flow everything is flow plus machine learning um, so yeah that's <laughs> I didn't really see this coming I thought this is like going to be a really niche thing and then then all of a sudden, yeah, apparently, so everybody has this idea. I explaining this stuff, and like I thought, like, hey, wait, this is what we are doing, and like, like there's this thing called ML flow. Yeah. I think, yeah. So we had to do an assignment on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't played with but it the much. The was good was the logging stuff. The logging, yeah. So that's that's so it. Yeah. So you're basically just saying it's like, what do you mean when you say the logging stuff? So like uh, I I'll just post a picture on GitHub. Okay, great. I, I think I have a screenshot of it. Yeah, you can continue. I'll talk after that. All right. Um. Uh. uh are you posting the screenshot? Give me a minute. Somewhere okay, here. Okay. Cool. Oh, maybe I'll attach a log file so like uh, 
if you okay. have it installed, you can just uh, run it and see the. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't have anything installed. I don't have it installed. Okay. But okay. um, I I've I've just mean I've seen it. I've seen it conceptually, like I saw. So the like it's neat because it lists all the model and the whole hyperparameters and the loss and the accuracies and you okay. can like sort through it. Cool. Yeah. So that's I mean that's the kind of thing like, so. Yeah, we're, we're obviously abstracting a lot of that stuff away, right? Um, yes. So maybe it would be good to sort of expose, and actually that's some, something that I ran into when I did this was, I was like, oh, okay, like, let me just go and grab all the ones, let me just do model.load, right? Because if you do model.load, it gives you every single model we have. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then let me just filter out the ones that are that are regression and then i realized we don't have a way to do that right now um so i had to put in all the names manually um so you know we've done we've done a lot of thing like yeah sorry we just we've done a lot of good work to make it very abstract but uh and that works that works great right because then you can go do this stuff without much knowledge of machine learning you can just feed through you know people who don't know it can feed through stuff and just get results now we probably need to expose more low-level things for people who want it right um, and that sounds like kind of what you're saying is they expose more low-level stuff like for for oh, no, more machine learning people in, like, uh, the only, I don't think they have this much of a complicated flow like the only feature which I used was like I don't know if they have anything else the only feature which I used was just the logging part so just you have logging. to write the your code in some yeah you have to write your code on your own, like you have to write all your model classes, oh, okay. model libraries you are using, you have to do that. Uh, like you have to do all the work which you are already doing. Uh -huh. They just make the logging easier. That's oh, they make the logging easier. Okay, so you're they saying like when I'm writing my model, they provide some APIs so that I can get information out at various places and monitor yeah, it. it. Yeah. Ah, I see, I see, okay. I see. Um, so like, let's just, yeah, we can easily add that. Already. I mean, that is yeah, like, yeah, we can that. easily do that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's like very uh, like uh, handy if you are using a lot of parameter tuning and all. Okay, so, well, let's uh, like, do that like then. This. So let's see, let's see. Uh, we need to add, oh, uh, and this is something, I mean, if you guys saw in, in feature a long time ago, we had this logging dict thing and and monitor and all that stuff basically all of that was designed around the fact that we might need to be outputting some logging stuff like this um but uh we can maybe add that stuff back in or we can find a new way to do it but so we need to add um some helpers for uh writing models to uh log data in yeah, a structured it. way so that when okay let's see aha so let's see so like you can click on each model and you can also see what the loss graph was uh, okay so yeah so you would like basically when you ran the model it generated these things as a part of their logging of yeah. running the model right all right so they'll display this information to you um so we would yeah. just need something that's like basically some it's kind of like you know like we have the logger dot right? yeah so that's the thing is that's another thing that needs to be worked on is is um i mean this isn't really a python thing but um um the like the interface for the UI, I mean, we can also do this from the command line, right? Because I wanted the, the the key point of this is everything needs to be exposed over every interface in case somebody wants to swap something out or use it within a different way, right? So what we need to really work on for this issue would be how do we provide some sort of structured logging interface, right? So what do you have any an example of what the code looks like when you generate those log messages? Because I mean, well, here, well, just, uh, like, it doesn't uh, like here. You this is. Sorry, yeah, so this is, I mean, this is what I'm going to suggest here, and you can tell me whether this, this is, like, what you're thinking. Um, so what I'm, what I'm thinking here is we'd have something like model. Um, so what I'm thinking here is, like, within our, our model methods, right, well, how we have logger.debug, we might have something like, you know, uh, logger or log.stat. 
and then, you know, regression line, um, and then we set the regression line, right? And so then when we um, view this, like when we view the model, we can say, okay, well, what are we the, like, we when we run the stuff, we'll end up with these debug messages on the console, right? But this would be sort of like structured logging so that when we're done running the model, we would be able to see, okay, like this, you know, the the regret, what is specifically in the logs that I'm looking for. So, well, I'm setting like some of the properties of this to be like the regression line, just like how you had the loss in that screenshot, um, like, or learning rate, like you might log, you know, some kind of structured logging like this, where you're saying, yeah. this is the thing that I want to record. And then it becomes easily accessible through whatever interface, right? Is that the idea here? Or am I missing the idea? I may be missing the idea, so I'm trying to... Okay. Like, uh, it'll be also helpful, like, uh, when we are specifying the model, uh, if we could pass, like, what hyperparameters to log, because uh, we are taking all of the stuff from the config anyways. So yeah, well, so that's... Yeah, so I guess at the, the first, the very first thing we would do, right, would be probably just in DFML model model when we do, and so the other thing is this stuff is going to be async because uh, because then we can stream it real time back in the UI. Um, so the first thing we would do would be await log.stat config and then self.config, right? Um, so, and that way, you know, that's the first thing that happens is you see the config of the model and then anywhere else that you want to log stuff, you could do await log.stat or for places where you aren't doing asynchronous stuff, you could do, you know, just log dot no async stat or some, something more user friendly than that. Um, and that way, for anything that's async, we can get the results in real time on the web UI. And for anything that's not, we just get them at the end of the model training or whatever you're doing. Is that sound like? Is that sort of the, the feature we're going for here, or that's sort of what I'm hearing yes, yes. is desired? Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. Um, so we need to add some helpers for mining routers to log data in a structured way so that uh, users can see uh, users. Yeah, uh, I posted uh, what the, like, you asked for the code, right? so what, it looks like. what it looks like. Yeah, this is, uh, so that's exactly what I was thinking, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty much yeah. exact same, only I, I called it that. that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. okay, so this is perfect. All right, that's what I was... I'm glad I'm glad they're doing that because or else I was I was going to be off base. So all right, yeah. so need to add some helpers yeah, for writing models. Uh, it's, it's most likely like what TensorFlow does, but since we are supporting it, it would be nice to have. It. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so. C video, well, everything in C video for more details. Um, okay, so sorry, back to, let's go back to um, Himanshu. Um, and, uh, yeah, sorry about that. No worries, no worries. I'm glad we got that because that's something that was in and then got taken out and needs to be needs to be in again. Um, so, let's see. Um, so Himanshu, actually, one of the most helpful things that you could do too would be we're starting to we're trying to fill out the tutorials some more, right? Um, and we have this new model tutorial right based on Simple Model. Um, now, if we could have one that's not based on Simple Model, like I don't know. The thing is, I don't know. Uh, at this point, I don't know if that's. Uh, I don't know how, I just, I'm not quite sure how useful this would be to make another one not based on simple model, but I have a feeling it would be useful, like, or one based on simple model still, but without storage and uh, something more complex, basically, because, like, Hashim, this, and Hashim's on, we have Hashim now, but, so what we're running into here is that, um, like, it's not clear, um, it wasn't clear to Hashim that, that he needed to, to save and, and load the model from disk. Um, and so I think that, that the, 
one of the problems with the new model tutorial right now is that it it abstracts some of that from you, right? It doesn't show you. Um, it just says you put things in stealth size storage if you want to save them, and we'll and we'll we'll save them to disk for you, right? Um, but now we're getting into like with with Hashim's thing. He's he's uh, you know he's got this external library, and it's not clear how you save or load things from disk. Um, so it might be good to to have some example of like oh you know here's some library. Oh, this well, this this idea is half baked. I don't know. Maybe we should let's let's wait. Actually, let's wait and see how this works out um, with this pull request, because this is sort of a good test of of the new model, uh, the new model tutorial, and we'll 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 iron out. We'll figure out what were all the issues with that um, with the tutorial, and then we'll go from there. So let's do the missing example. Let's do. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Well, you need to get up to speed on data flow stuff, don't you? Because part of your proposal is yeah. data flows. So let's think about. Okay, and you did the operations tutorial. Um, okay. Um, let me just look at the operations tutorial here. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, that was the use case, predicting using I.O. operations. Um, let's see. This actually maybe uh, it. Yeah? So I need to, uh, once told me to uh, let make you remember that we need uh, the data flow YAML file there in the use case. Oh yeah, we need an issue for thank you. Yeah, we we missed that. That's that also needs to be created. So we need need um probably tutorials doc on data flows. Um and actually maybe we should move we should maybe move this is actually a good tutorial on data flows. Um so maybe we should move this under tutorials data flow tutorials or something. Um, so let's, okay, so let's see, move, because um, this isn't actually so much a use case as a tutorial, I'm now realizing. Um, so let's see, predictions using it. Let's see, so make this one of the tutorials. Let's So let's make this one of the tutorials under the data flow tutorials. So, so move, need tutorial docs on data flows. Um, so make um, docs tutorials slash data flows slash index.rst and then move um, usage IO to docs tutorial tutorials data flows io.rst okay um so okay so let's see um okay and then well if you could also do this that would be good um and then how 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 let's let's just check in how with everybody who's in school how done are you with school like when is the yeah, end of I, the term i have viva on 25th so they are replacing the end some exams with the viva 25th because yeah 25th okay, cool. cool just curious okay for me everything ends on 13. the what is what for me, everything, yeah, uh, all of my projects, why was everything and some at 30 this month. 30, okay, cool. So, basically, it sounds like probably, you know, by next month, everybody's done with this term. Okay, I just want to know because yes. uh, if, you know, uh, okay, this is a good one just to sort of familiarize you a little bit with data flows. Um, easy, like, well, you've already got the experience with operations, but I want to see this one get done and, uh, and this should be quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so let's let's shoot, shoot shoot with this one. And okay, so this will be enough for you to get sort of till 
we still, I mean, I, I don't suspect you'd get all of this done by Friday. If you do, that's great. Um, uh, well, you may. Actually, you may get all of this done by Friday, but let's not give you too much. You're still in school, so. Um, yeah, I probably, I guess, Himanshu, I'll probably just hit you with a few um, here and there issues until you, um, until, like, while we're, before your project starts here. Um, so, because cause that way we can, we can we can use your brain power to to knock off a bunch of things that we need to get done. Um, yeah. Great. Um, so let's see. Okay, and then I think Hashim, you're on now. Um, is that do you did you have anything else you want to talk about, Himanshu? Or uh, no, no, this is it. No, okay, great. It. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Let's see. Uh, so yeah, Hashim, um, did you you want to go over this pull request? Uh, I'm actually oh, uh, still it. working on changes that you requested. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Okay, I didn't quite break it. All right, did you have anything you wanted to talk about today, or not really? Okay, well that's cool. Um, uh, yeah, let's see. I can do a quick recap for you. I mean, it might be good. Holy shit, what is this? What is this? Capacha Cloudflare. Is that FFM fake? No, it's NPM Audit. What? Okay. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. This, this keeps coming up. This is ridiculous. Okay, this is ridiculous. Where did npm go? Where did they go? Because they got combined with GitHub. Okay, I'm no, sorry. I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna file an issue on them. This is ridiculousness. I mean, come on. What do you like? You make a command line tool that might get hit with a Capacha from Cloudflare. Like, come on. You got to see that one coming. The JavaScript people. JavaScript people. Okay, no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't hate on the JavaScript people. I love JavaScript. Um. Okay. Oh, that makes me mad, but whatever. It's whatever. All right. Okay. Sorry. Um, let's just recap. Um, so we've got a few things that we need to do. Um, we've got a few issues that we still need to make um, to track for the 3.8 release. Um, and But I think we're moving along nicely here. Like, remember, so we're targeting, I mean, we're targeting... I believe I said we're targeting the the, the first week of next month. Um, so um, I think we can do this. I think we can definitely do this. Um, just sort of at the the pace we're making here. Um, none of these are like huge huge things. Um, let's see. Are any of these huge things that I'm not actually seeing? Well, automating the classification demo is probably uh, that may end up being a huge thing. And so if your exams end on the thirtieth, that may not happen. Um, but let's see. And then Windows support is up in the air because, oh, that would be really great to have, but Windows. Um, so let's see. Um, got some auto return type stuff. We're basically, we're going to use that stuff after we, um, we're going to go through the, all the examples and we're going to change them to use the auto return type stuff. Um, and then we're going to, uh, do the input tree point loading, apply that op so that we can automatically have that. We're going to add some structured logging infrastructure, um, and we're going to move around the tutorials. All right, great. Uh, anything that you guys want to talk about um, just in general or anything else? Just open, open items. All right. Uh, yeah. What about yeah. Uh, our blogging? Uh, oh yourself? yes, yes. Uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, stupid NPM. Right. Stupid Cloudflare. Okay. Um, okay. So I would just say, I mean, you should go on here and hit this URL. Um, and see if you can't uh, get get in. I don't know. I, I pinged them on IRC because um, there's a so GSOC. Um, there is a Python GSOC channel. 
if you need to communicate with the org, Python org admins, uh, this, uh, yeah, go for I it. I received a mail from them and, and I signed up, but uh, my profile doesn't show up there. Okay, yeah, I don't know. So and... let's, let's, so basically um, issue with profile not showing. Actually, uh, I have not, and again, and I have not received the emails. Um, uh, we told this to Yash yesterday, and I think he pinged the day about it. Okay. I don't uh, know if he, if he it. Yeah, I know Yash said, said you guys talked to him about it, so. All right, so we'll just, I mean, I, I'm basically waiting to hear back in the IRC channel, but we'll track this. So, um, and I mean, they're obviously not going to ding you if they did not explain correctly how to get into the thing. Obviously, only two people did the blog post that was supposed to be done yesterday. So there's, they not there's obviously the an issue. Post. They it's haven't done the issue? It's okay. No, all right. See, yeah. So there's something going on here, but they'll figure it out. Um, so don't worry about it. Um, but we'll get it figured out. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Um, it's a good, good, good talking to you guys today. Um, and let's see, is there anything else on the radar? Um, I've got some should I stuff that I did over the weekend. That we'll we'll see. Maybe if we have extra time, we'll talk about that. But we know we never seem to have extra time. So thanks everybody. We went over again. Um, maybe we just need another meeting, um, or maybe maybe I need to maybe I need to to rein in what we're I talking about here. They haven't had meetings for so long. They haven't had meetings. Well, we've been, I mean, we've got a pretty, yeah. we've got a, a really nice, strong community here. I mean, this is, we're good. like, all, all you guys are great. Um, like, they were really surprised so. when we said we have meetings. Yeah, well, everybody's doing such great work yeah. here, so we've got a lot to talk yeah. about. Um, all right, well, thanks, guys, um, and uh, I'll talk to you on Friday or on Gitter. And ping me if you need anything, of course. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.